Hello, welcome to this lecture on orthogonality and normalization of eigenvectors. This is part of the course Dynamics and Control of Mechanical Systems. Please watch the lecture on eigenvalues and eigenvectors if you haven't done so yet. Let us start with a short recap. In the previous lecture, we found that to uh, solve the generalized eigenvalue problem and find a non-zero solution to this eigenvalue problem, we need to solve for this determinant of the stiffness matrix minus lambda mass matrix is zero. And from there, we obtain the eigenvalues lambda. And these eigenvalues lambda are equal to omega squared, where omega is the natural frequency in radians per second, or we can also say omega is 2p f and f is the eigenfrequencies in hertz. Once we have these eigenfrequencies, we can obtain the eigenvectors or eigenmodes, which are associated to each of these eigenfrequencies. And these are the UR. But one important property of this UR is that the norm of these vectors, or in other words, the length, is undetermined. And this is something we need to choose. So to clarify this concept, let me illustrate with the half car model. You will recall we have looked into this model of, of, of a half car where the generalized coordinates are the vertical displacements, yp and yq of the two ends of the mass. And for this system, we found two eigenfrequencies and two eigenmodes. The first uh, eigenmode is one one eh? so both both ends of the mass go up and down in phase to call it like that so this would be the motion and the second eigenmode is the mode where uh, the two ends uh, move in antiphase so one is plus one the other one is minus one this choice for one one or minus one one is arbitrary because the only thing that the solution of the eigenvalue problem gives us is the direction of the vector. Let me show you that. So if we make a plot with the first coordinate of the eigenvector in the x-axis and the second coordinate of the eigenvector in the y-axis and we plot this u1, then the solution of the eigenvalue problem, the only thing this solution tells us is that this vector will have this direction. So this is the direction of the vector u1, which is aa. So this a could be anything. And the second eigenvector has this other direction, minus aa. So this is what the solution of the eigenvalue problem gives us. The actual length of the eigenvector could be 1, 1. Eh? So in this case, then a square root of 2 or 2, 2 or any other length we choose. So the goal of normalization is to make a clever choice for this length. But before we go into that, we need to discuss orthogonality. So let's look into orthogonality. And the orthogonality condition tells us that eigenvectors are orthogonal with respect to the mass and stiffness matrix. Let me explain what I mean with that. So imagine we have two eigenfrequencies, omega s and omega r, which are different. So two different eigenfrequencies. And for these eigenfrequencies, for omega s, we have eigenvector us, and for omega r, we have eigenvector ur. So as you see here, the orthogonality condition says that us transpose m ur is zero, and the same holds for us transpose k ur. That's zero as well. That's the orthogonality condition. Let's prove this is true. So if we take the solution of the eigenvalue problem, so as I say, we have 
eigenvalue, eigenfrequency omega r, and eigenvector u r. And they are a solution of the eigenvalue problem, so this holds k u r should be equal to omega r squared m u r. And the same holds for omega s u s. And now what we need to do is play around cleverly with these equations. So we can pre-multiply the first equation, equation one, with us transpose. This is what you get here in the first line. And pre-multiply the second equation with ur transpose. That's what you get here in the second line. And now we can just subtract them. So we do first equation minus the second equation. And you see that the result of this subtraction is zero on the left side, and this is due. I know it's not obvious. This term is equal to this term because the stiffness matrix is symmetric. So it doesn't matter whether you do use US transpose K zero U R or U R transpose K zero U S. This should give you the same result. So you know, even if you don't know that, that these two are zero, you know they are the same. So one minus the other one is zero. And then on the other side, we have um, omega r squared minus omega s squared. And here, as you see, we made use of the same fact that the mass matrix is symmetric. So doing us transpose m u r will give you the same result as doing u r transpose m u s. So if we look at this equation, we have two eigenfrequencies which are different. So this term can never be zero, but this product has to be zero. So there is no other choice than that u s transpose m u r is zero. So with this, we have proven that us transpose m u r is zero. And then of course, if this is zero, if we go back to these equations, then us transpose k u r will be zero as well. As you see, eigenvectors are not orthogonal uh, in the classical sense. So that you, the classical sense would be what you have here, that us transpose times u r is zero. This is the classical definition of orthogonality between two vectors. For eigenvectors, this is only the case if the mass matrix is an identity matrix. So if we have a mass matrix that is an identity matrix, then this will hold. But in general, eigenvectors are not orthogonal. They are only orthogonal through the mass matrix and through the stiffness matrix. Now I would like to look into what this results means in matrix form. So the consequence of orthogonality is that if we pre and post multiply the mass and the stiffness matrix with the eigenvector matrix, we obtain diagonal matrices. So if we have an eigenvector, we have an eigenvector, eigenvector matrix, matrix U with the eigenvectors, which are columns, u1, u2, u3, forming the columns of the matrix with n, the number of degrees of freedom. This eigenvector matrix diagonalizes the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix. So this means that if we multiply with u transpose and then m and then uh, post multiply with u, this product will give us a diagonal matrix with m1, m2, mn in the diagonal. And this is a compact way of representing this with r, an index that goes from 1 to n. And the same holds for the stiffness matrix. We have u transpose ku is a diagonal matrix with k1, k2 to kn in the diagonal. And the compact form of representing it is this. this small m, small case, 
are what we call the modal mass and the modal stiffness. So MR is the modal mass factor and KR is the modal stiffness factor. And the interesting thing here is that they are related through the eigenfrequency. So KR is equal to omega squared R times MR. So basically, omega R is the square root of KR divided by MR. And this is an interesting res result we can use for normalization. So let's look into normalization now. Normalization simply means that we need to choose the length of the eigencolumn or eigenvector, so the modulus of this vector. And we can look at some options we have to do this. We can scale the vector to have a maximum value of 1, so the component uh, with the maximum value has a value of 1. We can scale it to have a vector length of 1. We can also say that we normalize with respect to the mass matrix. So then u transpose m u is 1. So in other words, the modal mass factor is 1. Another possible normalization is a stiffness matrix normalization. And then we normalize to say u transpose k u is 1. So the modal stiffness is 1. And if we recall that the relationship between the modal mass factor and the modal stiffness factor is this one eh? so they are related to the through the eigenfrequency then we can conclude that when we use mass normalization the modal mass factor is one and the modal stiffness factor is equal to the eigenfrequency square and for stiffness normalization then we get a modal stiffness of 1 and a modal mass factor, which is 1 divided by omega r squared. The most used normalization is mass normalization. And you will understand why when we go to modal superposition. So to finalize, let's look into the matrix form of this uh, normalization. So when we do mass matrix normalization, what we, what we get is that u transpose m u is a diagonal matrix with ones in the diagonal, so basically the identity matrix. And u transpose k u is a diagonal matrix with the eigenfrequencies uh, squared in the diagonal. And in compact form, we represent it like this. And for stiffness matrix normalization, then we will get uh, u transpose ku is equal to the identity matrix and u transpose mu will be a diagonal matrix with, with 1 divided by omega squared in, in the diagonal. And this concludes this lecture. Thanks for watching. See you next time.